Hi, I'm Dave Herzberg. I'm one of the authors of the Goal-Oriented Assessment of Life Skills, or GOAL, published by WPS. And these are my kids. Hi, I'm Jacob. I'm 14 and I'm in 8th grade. Hi, my name is Anna. I'm 8 years old and I'm in the 3rd grade. And we're going to demonstrate the goal activities for you. This short video will cover the most important things to keep in mind and watch for as you go through the activities. To prepare the goal record form for testing, fold it so the performance record panel is on one side and the administration notes page is on the other. The Goal Easel provides all instructions for administration and recording the child's performance. Make sure you read the manual thoroughly and practice with the kit and easel before using the Goal for the first time. Keep the Goal backpack near the table so you have access to the kit materials you need. For utensils, roll all of the Play-Doh into a length about an inch and a half thick. Jacob's cutting pieces about a half inch thick, which is the right size. For scoring, I'll count only pieces that he cuts with both the knife and fork together. If Jacob hadn't cut the Play-Doh into 10 equal size pieces, I would have recut it myself before starting him on the spearing task. For scoring, I'll only count pieces that he spears one at a time without using his hands. For scooping, Jacob needs to scoop the water, sip a bit from the spoon, and transfer the rest to the second cup, all without spilling. Small drips off the bottom of the spoon don't count as spills. In locks, Anna gets 30 seconds to open the keyed lock and two minutes to open the combination lock. Before starting her on the combination lock, I demonstrated how to open it slowly and deliberately, and then reset the dial to one. In paper box, I count the balloons and umbrella sections that Jacob colors correctly. The correct ones have at least 90% of the shape filled with a single colored crayon and no stray marks extending more than 1 16th of an inch past the outer border. Jacob needs to cut on the solid lines, not on the dashed lines. To be counted as correct, each cut must be within the gray error band. A correct fold lies completely within the colored band that surrounds the fold line. The key thing to remember about taping is that you don't time the first tape placement. Jacob tapes the first joint with a piece of tape from the dispenser. To tape the remaining joints, he'll use four pieces of tape that I place at the edge of the table. I start the timer only after saying go for him to tape the second joint. When I count the number of joints he taped correctly, I'll include the one he did before I started the timer. For a notebook, I stack the sheets and dividers in the order specified in the easel. 
I also pointed to the tabs to show Anna the difference between the sheets and the dividers. Anna can earn credit for step N1 simply by opening and closing the binder and rings within the time limit. To earn credit for N2, she must order the stack so that no two dividers are right next to each other. For N3, she must place the six colored sheets into three same colored pairs, grouping the white, yellow, and blue sheets together. Clothes consists of dressing and undressing tasks, which are timed separately. Jacob needs to put on the oversized shirt and shorts right side out and with the labels in the back. He must remain standing while dressing and undressing. In ball play, I count how many times Jacob dribbles the tennis ball in 30 seconds. I won't count any dribbles where he lets the ball bounce more than once before hitting it again with his hand. Here Jacob is bouncing the ball with one hand and catching it with the other. I won't count a repetition if he drops the ball or catches it with both hands. Jacob needs to throw the ball so it bounces off the floor, off the wall, and he catches it, all with his preferred hand. I won't count a repetition if he drops the ball, lets it bounce twice, or catches it with both hands. Here Jacob stands behind the tape and uses his preferred foot to kick the ball against the wall. The ball must cross the tape on the rebound to be counted as a repetition. Set up tray carry in a room that's at least 20 feet long and 5 feet wide. Place the chairs 15 feet apart, facing each other, and space the three sponges at roughly equal intervals between. Before starting, I demonstrated the activity to Anna, but I didn't allow her to practice. Here Anna picks up the tray and walks quickly to chair B, stepping over and not beside the three sponges. She circles chair B and sits all the way down in it, then stands up and walks back to chair A, this time kicking all three sponges at least one foot to either side. The seven mobility elements required for passing steps T1 to T3 are listed with check boxes on the record form. Kicking the three sponges is scored separately in step T4. To pass T5, Anna must perform all seven mobility elements within the time limit without spilling any water from either cup. And that concludes our brief tour of the goal activities. Now, Jacob and Anna, what did you guys think? Well, I thought that a lot of the activities were interesting and they were fun to try. Well, some of the activities were challenging for me, but in the end, it was really fun.